Hey friend, Lakshya Kukreja here from Lux Audio. Today I'm going to show you my mix template. So why is a mix template important? For me, it saves me a lot of time and effort while I'm doing a mix and I can use that time and energy to be creative instead of doing the managerial side of things. So while you're mixing, it's just a small thing to make a new aux track and route a couple tracks here and there. But that is enough to take our focus away from being creative and then you stop enjoying because you're not mixing, you're just doing some housekeeping stuff. So let's have a look what I've got here in my mix template. So the first thing you notice is the color coding. Now obviously you can download this template and change the colors according to your color convention. So let's have a look at the buses or auxiliary tracks we've got here. So obviously these purple ones are the drum tracks. So most often than not we would have at least two kick drum tracks, kick in and kick out. So there is the kick bus, you can route your kick tracks to the kick bus. And then. There's a snare bus for snare top and snare bottom. Then I've got a kick plus snare bus. So sometimes you want to compress your kick and snare together to maybe glue them together or make them pump together. So you can use this bus for that purpose. Then we've got a Tom's bus and it's a stereo bus so that you can pan your toms left and right. Then we've got metal bus. Metal bus for me is uh, anything that has cymbals, so overheads, hats, rides or any other spot mic you might have for any cymbals. Then we've got a room bus for all your room mics. and. All of these tracks then get summed into the drum bus. Then I've got a parallel drum channel going. So I'm sending my kick, snare, toms and rooms separately to this parallel channel where we would have a compressor or a distortion plugin. Now these two tracks, the drum bus and the parallel drum bus, they both get summed into the drum sum. So now you can do a balance of your overall drums versus your parallel drums and then you can control your overall final drum volume with this drum sum fader. Then we've got percussion bus a mono bass bus, acoustic guitars, guitars, keys, then all these instrument tracks from the drums to the percussions, bass, acoustic guitar, guitars, keys, all of these are routing into an instrument bus which is right there. Then we have a background vocal bus and a lead vocal bus which two would be routed to a vocal bus, vox bus. Now our vox bus and our instrument bus, they both get routed to our final mix bus. Then you can see all these effects, auxes, effects buses. They already have some stuff happening. So it's a basic Abbey Road EQ plus I like to take out the presence frequency from my reverbs. And then I've got a room reverb, a hall reverb, a plate, a spring, a long verb, a slap back, mono delay, a stereo delay, all these already set up and good to go so that when I'm mixing I don't 
have to create these boxes and then choose a reverb plugin and then EQ it. I can just send my track straight away to one of these effects and get my creative juices flowing and once I have a clear direction and a particular sound that I'm chasing then I can go and swap out a reverb plugin or delay plugin and tweak it to taste. So now we've got our Vox bus, our instrument bus and our effects bus. That are the three main macro buses that get summed into the final mix bus. So now I've got all these handles, I can do a balance between my instruments and my vocals and the overall effects of the song and everything goes into the mix bus and then I've got a master fader that is looking at the mix bus and then I've got a few plugins on the master channel that are bypassed by default so the first plugin is a stereo width plugin and I've chosen stock Pro Tools plugins here and I've turned the width to 0% so as soon as you engage this plugin you flip your mix to mono so this could come in handy when you want to check your mix in mono you just need to activate this plugin to flip your mix to mono the next plugin is a limiter and I've set it ceiling to minus 0.3 so sometimes you want to monitor your mix at a louder level so that's when it comes in handy even if you want to just crank your master fader you will not be clipping at least and the last plugin is a loudness meter so that you can keep an eye on your levels this one happens to be a free one you can download it from the link in the description below so that is my mix template so basically i have created a lot of handles for myself that help me move around my mix quickly and easily and saves me a lot of time and energy that I can use to be creative. Hope this video was helpful. You can download my template from the link down below in the description. Give this video a thumbs up, throw a comment down below, subscribe to my channel for more new exciting content. See ya on the next one.